join the Empire, they said. You need some excitement in your life. Yet, once again, here I am, guarding an empty hallway. Two space years of this bantha voodoo. And for what? A sweaty suit of armor? And all the loneliness a guy can ask for? Was that box there? Get it together, man. You are a stormtrooper. Oh, what have I done with my life? You gotta be joking me. Now this place is haunted? No way. Yep, yep. No way we can take it off the No, no, That rock is actually sharp. Don't quit getting on that. Do not eat that. Do not eat that. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Today, let's take a little look. Well, okay, not a little look. This may drag out a bit because, ooh, it's Star Wars. The Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Wave 26, I believe. Wave 26 or whatever you want to call it. I call it the series of figures that we've already had in plastic form before, but now there's some improvements along with an Ewok. <laughs> and you guys know me. I love Star Wars. I love getting Star Wars figures. So as soon as I was able to compile all these together, you know I'm going to do them all at the same time. The Stormtrooper and the Clone Trooper I was able to find at Target. My favorite sponsor in the world, Dorkside Toys, got Tebow and Admiral Akbar in. And then I had to do some hunting for these two because while I've seen them at Target and now Walmarts, every time I found this assortment, these two were gone. I brick seeked the hell out of everything, and when I found a little town in Oklahoma had gotten six plus, I ran over there today and found Mando. Mando. But if you're not wanting to hunt, you just want to stay home, do some pre-orders, hit up Dorkside Toys. He got these two in straight cases, and he should be getting the rest pretty soon. And of course, I passed on the new packaging for the X-Wing Luke, because we got that with the 40th anniversary of Empire Strikes Back wave. It's the same figure, and I took a look at that along with the Snowspeeder, I think. But this is the first full assortment where we get a nice look at this new packaging. On the front, there's a window, shows most of what you're getting here, but on the side, I really feel like this is the new thing. This is what really caught my eye when I saw them on the shelf. And the cool thing about this is you can hang them on the peg and what you do is just look down the side and you can see everything. Everything's color coded by movie and then nice pictures of the characters. In fact, if you keep them in the package, does this go this way? Yeah, you can see Akbar's arm carries over to Tebow's packaging. See, Mandalorian's more of a darker goldish color than the yellow of the Clone Wars. So if he's Mandalorian, this should be right here and there you go, see Mando carries over to Stormtrooper packaging. And I get if you've done a carded collection this whole time and it's all red cards with the numbers on the side, this is a restart and it doesn't really match, but oh, like I said, striking when you find them. On the back is pictures and then a bio for each character come along. Again, color coded. I love the blue of which movie is this? Oh, Empire Strikes Back. And then green for Return of the Jedi. On the other side, Star Wars Black Series logo, those colors, window, I'm gonna miss those big fonts going up the side. There was just something about it. On the top, window to let some light in when it is hanging on the peg. And then on the bottom, bunch of legalese, barcode. But let's get to opening, see what's going on here. And I'm gonna start with Darth Vader because he seems the closest to a figure that we already have. I think this is my first time holding a standard package. I got Zeb and it was in the new packaging. This is weird. On the side, it punches in a little bit. The plastic's not attached to the cardboard, which I knew that they were going towards a more easily recyclable package. So I guess that's that. Oh yeah, so the plastic is all together sealed with a cover on it. And then over here, you're left with just cardboard. Oh, and uh, <laughs> there's quite a bit of difference here. Getting the comparison out of the way, here is the 40th anniversary, A New Hope, Darth Vader. And if you're on a galloping horse, you'd think, oh, same figure, I don't need this one. But once you start looking closer, uh, yeah, there's sculptural and engineering differences. First up, the helmets. I've never paid too much attention about the intricacies of what changed between the movies. You can see a definite sculptural difference here. The slight proportion change, the angles, and how the eyes sit under the top helmet there. Same thing for the chest armor, very similar, but this one comes to a point right above the chest box and this one flattens out. And then speaking of the chest box, it's completely different too. The green and the red, and that, well, not just the colors. You can see the buttons are bigger right there and then these are smaller off to the side and the flippy switches are bigger on the old one too. Same thing with the boxes on the belt. This time around on Empire Strikes Back, the green buttons are bigger and the red, eh, it's about the same, but slight difference. I think the cod piece 
Hmm, is it the same? It's damn close, but the big difference is the sheen. They slap this one with some glossy finish, and you can see that it stops right below the belt buckle. It's just like a whoosh. The legs, as far as I can tell, all the way down to the boot are reuse, but you get to the arms, maybe the shoulder pads are shared, the upper arms. Then on the lower arms, Empire Strikes Back has a new sculpt. Well, it's kind of the same right here, but you can definitely see the difference in the glove tops. Same thing for the hands. A New Hope has some side pattern to it. That's not on the Empire version. And then for engineering, because of the forearms being a new piece, they cut the slot deeper. Whereas A New Hope goes up to eh, a little past 90. Empire Strikes Back goes past that point. Move up to the shoulders on A New Hope. This is standard hinge and swivel. This one, a butterfly joint. I don't know if you can see it, but there is some forward and back to that. But at the neck, I don't know what kind of engineering differences there are here, but for A New Hope, there's just kind of some forward and back, some slide side to side, not a lot here. For Empire Strikes Back, look at the up, look at the down. There is shift all the way side to side, and there's even some tilt. Oh, well, quite a bit of tilt, and you know me, I like my tilt. So similar figures, and the 40th anniversary of New Hope was already great for 20 bucks. The Empire version, vastly improved. And I almost have a feeling when we get to Return of the Jedi, there will be even more improvements. That's just how they are with Vader. But for articulation, like I said, there is some kind of dumbbell joint maybe, and you get all kinds of head movement, which given this helmet and how the neck piece is and the armor, it shouldn't move this much. I doubt the actor in a suit like this can move this much. Like I said, butterfly joint shifts forward and back. The shoulder pad does go inside the torso just a bit, get you right there. And then of course swivels all the way around. Hinge and swivel at the elbow, comes up past 90, and then that rotates. Lightsaber holding hand is hinged side to side, so meh. But it does swivel. Forgot to mention the left side is sculpted in that force choke pose. Ball joint at the mid torso gets you about that much. Ball at the hip, you've got to kind of work it around that cod piece, but I do like how this is more laid down. On the first version, kind of stuck out. That dater is excitable. You kind of work around that, comes up to, well, almost 90. Back, out, oh, well, <laughs> look at Vader. Swivel at the thigh, double knee. Oh, is that getting caught in there? Well, it's close, so close. Hinge at the ankle goes back, forward a little, and then forward facing pin for rocker. Forgot to mention, it is accurate to the movie that the cloth here goes under the shoulder armor but the cape seems to want to flop around a bit. That may be the dumbbell joint. It wants to ride way back here like this, and mm, the hole is visible right there. I'm afraid this is really thin on the front, and I'm going to tear it or something. But if you shift the head forward where it's not pinching on the cape, you can bring this forward and over the shoulders, so you can have him draped in his cloak, I guess, if you want that look. And then a big difference from a lot of the imports, this carries down to here and his cloth gets out of the way of the legs. It's not the heaviest material, but it does drape fairly nice. For accessories, of course, Vader is going to come with a lightsaber. It comes with a red blade, easy to pull out. And then for the hilt, comparing it to A New Hope, again, I've never kept track of differences like this, but there is tiny sculptural differences. Same basic design, but on the old one, it has on the silver, it has a couple of rectangles right there, and then a little silver painted right there. And damn, that is a tight grip. Blade does kind of angle odd out of the hilt there. I don't know if I put it in. Oh, I guess if you twist, there we go. Okay, I don't think it's made like that. It may be warped from the package, but I twisted it. Well, there goes angle again. Just in certain places does it look straight. Vader stands at six and five eighths inches tall, which is very close to accurate. And as we've seen time and time again, most of the Vaders from most of the companies is about the same size. Here's the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series 40th Anniversary A New Hope Darth Vader, and then Bandai's SH Figure Arts Return of the Jedi Darth Vader. And honestly, I did not mean to put them in the order of movie, but three displays showing three different movies, these are probably the figures I would use on each shelf. And then to give you an idea of size, here it is with the <laughs> tried and true Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Stormtrooper, the old one, and then the Star Wars Black Series Bespin Han. Next up, let's see how they've improved the, uh, get up there, the clone trooper body. I wonder how theft proof this is. Hmm. I guess it's <laughs> no harder to get into than any other packaging. Ah, good as new, right? With the Camino clone, there are some definite improvements here. In fact, I like this 
over the previous Hasbro clone troopers, but there's also some weird decisions made here. Again, like Vader, it is very hard to tell that this is all new sculpt. Again, if it's if you're driving past, you'd never know, but you get up close and that's when you start seeing, oh, there's sharper angles, there's better engineering decisions made, just an overall more aesthetically pleasing figure, I think. Especially on the torsos, on the old one, you lift it back and it got in the way of itself kind of you could see the ridge up there on the new one they smoothed that out to make it more like the stormtrooper i guess or some other troopers we've seen recently it's just also on the original the shoulder pad <laughs> The new one, a rubbery shoulder pad glued at the bottom so you can lift it up and the arm, well, even if you get it there, you can still pop it up. Whoop. That gives you full range of movement. The old one did have double knees and even at that point, it couldn't come all the way up. On the new one, we have the new hinge and swivel knees. They come back and honestly, it's just short of what the old one did. But it is an overall cleaner look, no peg holes on the outside and the knee pad is kind of a separate piece but it's attached right here and it has this band that just sits loose around the back. So it gets out of the way whenever you go to bend the knee. Not a problem at all. Then we get to the elbows and we kind of run into a problem. Again, on the original double elbow, but you still couldn't, well, it got a little past 90. With the new one, again, this elbow pad attached on the back here so it doesn't slide up and down but the band itself is a loose piece around the front. And you think, oh, it'll work just like the knee. Let's bring this up. Oh, it goes past 90, cool. But if you push on it, you'll notice that it kind of digs into that band. And in fact, after bending it just a couple of times, I'm already starting to tear it. So I like the thought put into it and I like the extra range that it gives us. And on top of that, it's a clean look, but I, I don't know, I don't think those are gonna last too long. But the helmet, it seems bigger and the eyes seem a little off. I don't know, there's just something about the helmet. I like it, but is it accurate? And it's bigger because it actually has a fake head up in there. I haven't been able to peel this off yet. I don't have an extra clone. <laughs> I'm not willing to sacrifice this one yet. But from what I've seen, there's an actual Tamir Morrison sculpt under there. And with that, we have the new school dumbbell joint at the top of the neck, and then the ball joint at the bottom, which gives you some good range up and some tilt, but down, I don't know if something's wrong with this, but it just pops back up to neutral position. Well, close to neutral position. You can see the bottom of the neck shifting forward and back just barely, but I think that chin up under there gets in the way. I can feel it pushing against the neck as I try to go forward. But saying all that, I am happy to have a more natural looking clone. Everything feels like there's a person inside an armor here. And on top of that, <laughs> literally, the paint job with the tampos and the lines, it's mostly cleanly applied. Looks like it gets a little crazy right here. The black seeps down onto the gray, but again, for the most part, it's a nice looking clone. Like I've already said, dumbbell in the helmet, ball joint at the bottom of the neck, look up. Eh, I wish it would go further down. Beautiful tilt though. Swivel. Yeah, that was a crack. I was gonna say there is a butterfly joint in there, but it doesn't move much. But after that crack, there is forward and back. What's the left one do? Put that there. Yeah, just have to crack loose and it gets eh, about that much. Shoulder pad out of the way, arm hinges up, swivels all the way around. Single hinge elbow comes up past 90. Swivels, oh, I'm afraid to move that, it's tearing into it. Swivels, gun shooting hand has the appropriate up and down hinge and it has a lot of movement. Swivels, ball joint mid torso, you're not gonna crunch all the way over but that's not bad range. Oh, and I forgot about this. Perfect world, we'd have G.I. Joe drop down hips, but as is, as you come up, you have to rotate the leg to get the armor to go up to the side of it. And then about right there. Down, rotate, back, out. Oh, actually I surprised myself with that. That's further than I thought it'd go. Again, single knee comes up past 90 and then that rotates, which works in your favor because you rotate the leg as it comes up here. When you bend the knee, you can rotate the arm, leg, and to here for a kneeling stance. That's why in all the promotional pictures we saw the knee pad off to the side. Ankles are also improved. You can hinge it back to there. Big detents goes forward and then forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, the clone comes with a smaller blaster and this is actually not the same sculpt as the original. The newer one is just a bit sharper all the way around. And even better, the old one, rubbery, the new one, stiffer. That is exactly the same for the large rifle too. Just slight sculptural differences here. It's thinner, 
it's more detailed, it's more sharp all the way around. But it can do this, so I'm not gonna complain too much. Well, I wish it would go a little bit tighter. Oh, so close, it just pops out barely. Oh, but look at that, you get a much more natural at attention stance. The clone stands at just barely over six inches tall. Oh, you're gonna stand up, stand up, stand up. There you go. And then here it is with the older Hasbro Star Wars Black Series clone, which always felt clunky. You know, that was one of the biggest gripes with that figure. But the Kamino clone does go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Bandai model kit clone trooper. Let's go ahead and see what's going on with the Beskar Mandalorian. Oh, cape hole. And it took me all of about two minutes of getting it out of the box before I'm like, oh man, I love Mandalorian. This is making me want to rewatch the first season and more than ready for the second season. But like the rest, let's go over the differences real quick. And there's actually more new parts than I thought, or well, remembered, I guess. Of course, we have the new chest piece. Underneath seems the same basic sculpt. What's back here? Oh, actually, no, the back is different too, which I guess makes sense because they had to make it compatible with the jetpack. Mid torso is the same, the belt's the same, the crotch piece is the same, the whole right leg is reuse, I think. But on the left side, we get a new thigh pad. Different gauntlet on the left side, along with a new shoulder pad. And then same thing on the right, just slight sculptural differences. And then of course we have that new shoulder pad with the mud horn on it. The helmet seems the same, same size, same shape. Seems a little off whenever you compare it to the show, but at the same time, it's definitely a Mandalorian helmet. I do believe that the cloak is a reuse too. Slightly different color for the Shore Trooper hand guards, whatever those are. But just like in the show, this looked run down and by the end, he looked all shiny -er. I mean, it's still dirty, it's still grungy, but I like the look of the Beskar armor. And articulation wise, uh, dumbbell at the top of the neck, I think, and then ball joint at the bottom can look up, can look down. Nice tilt, swivel. Butterfly joint that was a little stuck out of the package again, just like the clone, but not bad movement. Again, rubbery shoulder pad rides up onto the torso to get the arm up to there. Swivels all the way around. Hinge and swivel at the elbow comes up eh, slightly past 90 and then rotates. Trigger finger hand goes up and down. Swivel. Ball joint mid torso gives good range. Ball joint at the hip comes up to there. The armor runs into the top piece. Back. Out. Not bad at all. Swivel nicely hidden behind that thigh armor. Double knee. It goes eh, most of the way. Hinge at the ankle goes, oh, hey. <laughs> there's a pop and it goes all the way. Forward, forward facing pin for rocker. The pistol, nice sculpt, looks like it does in the show. And then compared to the older one, the older one was a little bit dirtier. This one's a shinier silver and a lighter brown on the handle. And that's essentially the same thing for the rifle too. This is the new Beskar one. This is the older one. You can tell by the dirtiness and the paint that rubbed off the hand trying to get it around this stock. And they haven't made the hand any softer either. So it's kind of a chore to get the weapons down in there. Push and twist, push and twist. You're coming with me. But there's also a holster, hide away the pistol. Works great. And then for the rifle, there is a rectangle peg hole on the back and you're supposed to line the strap over it. And then the rifle plugs into there. And actually, this seems to work a little, well, okay. <laughs> it's not gonna hold the full weight of the figure, but this seems to work slightly better than the first time around. It still feels like the peg doesn't wanna plug all the way in. You want it to, <laughs> go, zoop, but it just doesn't go. But I feel like it does stay on better. But then to complete the full season one look, we also get a jetpack. And at first looking at it, I thought, oh, well, they reused Boba Fett's jetpack, but nope, it's a different sculpt and the thrusters are in a different spot. Very similar, but not the same. I do feel like after we got the paint on the rifle, paint on the pistol, the paint on the rest of the figure, it, this seems a little plain. And I understand that it was one color in the show, but there was also some dirt, some dust. I mean, something to bring out the detail here. And I actually haven't tried to plug this in yet. Oh, well, okay. Once it's on there, <laughs> it being three pegs, that's very secure. Toga, toga. Rotate that back around. And I have a feeling that, yep, that's not great. So once again, I must track down a soft goods cape for Mando. And just like the heavy Mandalorian, if you have any Iron Man blasts laying around, some extras, those do plug into there. It's not the tightest fit, it's just snug, but they'll stay in. Mando stands at about six and an eighth inches tall. And since he reuses a lot of parts from the first Mandalorian, he's gonna fit in just the same as this one. And the same goes for some troopers like the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Stormtrooper and Biker Scout. And because I love the original design of the Stormtrooper so much, I'm hoping the improvements here are better executed. Did he survive the carbon freezing process? Ah. 
Yes, he did. Oh, and there's actually a lot going on here that I wasn't expecting. First off, which one looks more natural? Uh, be honest. Be honest. This new Stormtrooper, completely new sculpt. And while they, again, did away with double joints at the knees and elbows, I don't really miss them here. And I know some people are like, man, you kissing Hasbro's ass. But really, I mean, yes, my thing is to have them kick ass, but that's just a running joke. Most of the time, I don't use that in poses, especially on characters that are wearing armor and wouldn't be able to do that in the real world anyway. I've hung out with 501st guys. <laughs> They can't even sit down. And while the elbows were always pretty good on the Stormtrooper, especially compared to later versions of other troopers like clones in First Order, the new one with the single elbows, it's not really that much different. I mean, look, yeah. And while the new trooper is based on Rogue One slash Mandalorian, I feel like the helmet overall, through all the movies, is way more accurate than the original version from Hasbro. I mean, they worked on that here and there, but that was never my favorite. But all the way around, the sculpt is just sharper, it's more accurate, it feels more natural. Again, it's like a little dude in an actual suit of armor. And I don't know what this craziness is, that the whole chest piece is a separate cover for the articulation of the underbody, but oh, it's kind of brilliant. I have found myself a couple of times after posing it thinking, man, he has no neck and his shoulders are way too low. But then I remember, oops, that needs to slide down. But when you crunch, it doesn't really get in the way. It doesn't move up as you go forward. It stays all the way down. So I don't know the exact purpose of that other than it looks badass. It looks real. And just like the clone, it can get in an ad attention stance. It just feels so natural. And then on the back, you have all those details that you're used to with a Stormtrooper just feeling more realistic than what we've seen in the Black Series. I've seen people complain about the lack of a holster, but looking at screenshots and pictures from Rogue One and even Mandalorian, the majority of Stormtroopers didn't have a holster, so I'm okay with that missing. Like the clone, you can see that there is a fake head under there, and I think this one's also Tamir Morrison, but I can't be positive about that. Again, I'm gonna need more Stormtroopers. Maybe that'll be a play day. We'll come along, rip some helmets off, and see what's under there. And everything moves so fluid here. Again, dumbbell joint at the top of the neck, ball joint down at the bottom, can look up, can shift forward to look down. It shifts side to side. It also tilts. Swivels, excellent range to the butterfly joints. I mean, can bring both arms forward in order to hold a blaster. So forward, back, look at that, that's awesome. The shoulder pad this time around is not made like the clone trooper. It is actually a piece with a ring on it that's sandwiched between the butterfly joint and the shoulder. It is rubbery, so as you hinge the arm up, it kind of just rides on top of it. But when you go to rotate the arm, the shoulder pad rotates with it if you hold on to it. If you just go cranking on it, it wants to stay in place and it eh, it gets out of the way, but you can move it around, get it back in place. I was about to say swivel at the bicep, but that's actually the big honking butterfly joint going. Single elbow comes up to about right there and then that rotates. The appropriate up and down hinge for a trigger finger hand and that swivels. The left is side to side. Ball joint at the torso, not bad. Again, not gonna go super crunchy, but <laughs> hula hoops the hell out of any other stormtrooper. Ball coming out to the hip. The leg does raise up to there, but the armor does shove it out a bit. But it can go, well, 90. Back just as much. In fact, he wins back on this wave so far. Out? Eh, not terrible for an armor-wearing character. Swivel at the thigh, beautifully hidden behind that armor piece. Single knee. Again, it gets up to there. It's not going to kick its own ass that's okay. And then that swivels. Hinge at the ankle goes back, goes forward, big detents, forward facing pin for rocker. Comes with a handy dandy trusty E11. And I actually had to go digging for one because none of my stormtroopers are holding it. But here's the older sculpt. It's smaller and I feel like it's more accurate. Just like the clone weapons, sharper detail all the way around. And in fact, it has, is that a flashlight on the side? Push and twist. Not a problem at all. Beautiful. Hey. Going back to paints for a minute, it's fairly clean what little is applied all the way around. The tampos at the helmet look good until we get to the blue right there, and that looks a little muddy. Cleaner here on the other side, I wish both sides match like that. Damn, I love that original Stormtrooper armor. The Stormtrooper stands about a sixteenth short of six inches tall. Here it is with Hasbro's original Black Series Stormtrooper and then the Black Series Biker Scout. And then here it is next to two of my favorite Stormtroopers, the Bandai Model Kit Stormtrooper 
Stormtrooper, and then the newer Bandai SH Figure Arts Stormtrooper. I got several of the model kits, of course, because at $20, $25, you build them yourself. Nice, cheap, easy. But then with the new SH Figure Arts, I wanted multiples, but I held off hoping that a $20 Hasbro figure would, you know, keep up with these two, and it definitely does. I'll just pay $20 a pop all day, every day, to build an army of these. Let's put them in the same pose, see how he stands up. Hell yeah, just slightly smaller, but still looks good. And even though we have an Akbar on the shelf, it's an older Akbar. This is the original trilogy. Let's see what's going on here. Grr, let me out! And oh, is it good to get an OT Admiral Akbar on the shelf. It's not all unique sculpting and it's not exactly accurate, but <laughs> you can't help it. You gotta do it. That's a trap! Bringing in the previous sequel Akbar, you can see, well, it is kind of hard to tell because with this collar riding up, it makes it look slightly different, but I am 99% sure that that is the same head sculpt. The eyes are in the same position, the same wrinkles, the same little tentacles, the nostrils, and the same thing goes for the forearms and the hands, they're sculpted in the same position. And of course, same thing on the left side. The sleeves probably could have been reused, but that's a new sculpt along with the torso under this overlay and then the legs with the stripes going down the side. The old one had more of a tactical look with the pants and the boots. But there is a huge difference in paint application here. It's the darker, more, well, I was gonna say more realistic, but more accurate to the movie darker skin to go along with the darker splotches on top. Same thing for the arms comes down on the original. It was just kind of red with maybe a darker wash on it. That just adds a whole new layer of realism. Well, as realistic as a goldfish headed admiral in the Rebel Alliance goes, the overlay piece is a bit cumbersome. It's attached, well, it's not attached to the body, but the belt is fairly tight around the waist and it likes to ride up. Well, it's not gonna slip up and over the head because the head is bigger than the neck hole, but it kind of swallows his fish cranium up a bit, which to be honest is not totally inaccurate from the movie, but it did sit slightly lower. And you can do that by pulling the belt down, but it simply wants to ride back up anytime you move it. So I guess if you're putting it on the shelf, you can just grab it down and then put it up and then... Also in the movie, the sleeve comes down below the elbow, but that is not a huge deal. It's not a deal breaker for me. Otherwise, we get all the new parts as evidenced by, you know, the newer single joint at the knee. Also underneath there, there's a ball joint that gives you pretty good movement and that kind of makes up, for, well, I don't know if it really makes up for the lack of a neck here. Like the first Akbar, there's no side to side there's no forward and back and what little forward and back you get is to make the mouth open because the bottom jaw is a separate piece that just kind of floats there I mean you can kind of well, no it just falls back open but most of the time he's looking forward again in the movie that's probably why they give him the chair that floated around it's like oh I can't turn my head in this costume so the chair is gonna have to do it for me but that's not to say I don't like the figure again finally getting <laughs> proper Admiral Akbar on the shelf, that makes me happy. Going over articulation, we just talked about the neck. It's simply boop, open up the mouth, feed the fish. They did give him one hell of a butterfly joint at the shoulder though. Outside of that, the arm hinges up, swivels around, hinge and swivel at the elbow, comes up to 90 and then rotates. Hinge at the wrist side to side, even though that is a trigger finger, so not the greatest, but we never saw Akbar with a blaster anyway. So Again, a little bit of hula hoop at the waist. All coming out to the hip can come forward. This is soft, even though it's tight right there. Back out, not quite 90, but not bad. Swivel at the thigh, hidden right at the line of the lower tunic. Hinge at the knee, slightly past 90, but again, dude's gonna be sitting. There's rotation there. You have this early 80s pants leg coming down, so that does get in the way of ankle articulation. It only goes back that far, forward that far, and then forward facing pin for rocker. Akbar comes with your standard Rebel Blaster, looking good. Again, like the other weapons we've seen so far, the older ones seem to be recast. They're very clean. But I don't know if it's a new sculpt compared to the older one. I, it looks like all the same details, same size. I, I can't really tell a difference. Except for the amount of detail, like this is a brand new mold or something. And really, essentially the same paint job. <laughs> Which one's the old? Which one's the new? And oddly enough, it does go in his hand fairly well. He's not going to pull the trigger. Well, he can get his 
little fingernail in there. Although I will probably never display him like this. Akbar stands, well, exactly six inches to the top of his fishy dome, which is exactly the same as the older version of himself. And then a Bespin Han with a custom indoor jacket on it. And then really the only new character in the line, the Ewok, finally makes its debut in the Black Series. And at one point in my life, I was like, oh, Ewoks? The teddy bears from Return of the Jedi? Do I need figures of those? Well, yeah, I, I did, but they weren't high priority until we're this deep in the line without any Ewoks. And I, <laughs> this got me excited. Between Tebow here and Paplu is in the uh, San Diego Comic-Con exclusive, hopefully at the end of this month. It makes me want Wicket and Chief Chirpa, and Low Gray. I, I haven't even messed with this thing yet, and I'm already excited about more Ewoks. And you know what? I'm impressed. I love this figure. The furry sculpt work, the facial expression, you can see the joints, but they had to do that in order to get the maximum range possible with a figure this small. And the paint job on it does a decent job of hiding it for the most part. Love the stripes. Love how it's a lighter gray and a darker gray. The look, the feel, the proportions, it all just jumps right off the screen. Even the face, and I'm not gonna say likeness, but there's kind of a personality here. I like the shininess to the eyes. You can see his little ears, poking through the headdress, which is also a fantastic look to it. Some animal is now Tebow's hat. There's a bits of paint to the feathers, to the horns, maybe a wash to it. But back here on the hair, I know it's on the back of the figure, but I'd like to see that painted or these stitches just to punch it up a bit. The necklace with the bone pieces on it and the two straps, one coming to the knife sheath and the other coming down to the horn, along with the headdress, makes me think that we're going to see reuse with this body. The headdress is only really attached in the back and at first I thought, oh, this comes off, but nope. Or if it does, it's just one peg in the back somewhere. Like the stormtrooper, like the clone trooper. I may have to get another Tebow and do some ripping some pieces off, maybe some repaint, give me some more Ewoks. Like I said, some of the joints are very apparent, like on the front of the ankle right there. But that had to be that way in order to get that much range of motion out of it. And this stuff hanging around does like to get out of place a bit. Whenever you're moving the neck, this gets kind of pinched between it and shoved and sticks up. But you just move it around a little bit, put it back down. It still looks good. And speaking of articulation, there's more than you think. <laughs> when I got it out of the package, I was like, oh, he's going to be awkward. But there's actually some shift forward and back on the neck, even some side to side. And I think that is, yeah, that looks like a full on dumbbell joint. You can look up, shift forward and look down, even some tilt. Swivel, no butterfly joint, but that's okay. We're working in a compact body here. The arm does hinge up to, well, almost 90. Swivels around, hinge at the elbow, comes up. Look at that, past 90. Again, it's exposed. You see that joint, but they had to do that in order to get you that. And then that rotates. Weapon holding hand is side to side swivel. Ball joint at the waist or right above the waist and hell that's not bad. Look at that. Ball coming out to the hip comes up to well <laughs> almost 90. Back out. That's nothing to complain about. Yep yep. Knee well goes to 90. Then that kind of swivels. There's a lot of fur going on right there but it you can rotate it. And then hinge at the ankle goes back, really nice forward. And then even some forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories comes with this stone knife of some kind. It's just a blade handle. That's what you get. It's a little small for the grip. Well, actually, what's it look like over here? Okay, maybe the left is the knife grip in hand because it's tight over there. And that goes into that sheath. You have the spear, have a wood look. There is a little paint here at this fur or whatever that is. And then the wrap holding the uh, stone spearhead on. And that's actually kind of rustic, rough looking. And I'm guessing this, yeah, that's tight over there. And then to finish it off, there is a rock strapped to the end of a stick. Some kind of ax chopping device, very Ewokian. And that is actually too big. That's definitely the knife holding hand. And this is either the spear or the ax holding hand. I like this. I always think of one of these as, well, Wicket came with a spear back in the day. So I automatically think Wicket. Tebow may get the stone ax here. To the top of his head, under the headdress, it seems he's about three and three quarter inches tall. But to the top of the feathers, it's about four and five eighths. Which is very appropriate with, again, that Bespin Han with the custom indoor jacket on it. And then the Black Series Biker Scout. Oh, more Ewoks. And then for giggles, here's a custom Ewok kit that I put together a few years ago, painted up. I should have paid more attention to the shoulders, sunk them a bit, but this will work for now. But with Hasbro giving us Tebow and Papaloo, hopefully we'll see Wicket here in the near future. Okay, while setting up for the final shot, 
I did turn the clone trooper's neck all the way around, and there seems to be, well, I don't know if I can really tell a difference. There may be an Adam's apple or some kind of V sculpt right there on the front, but turning it around, I was able to get it to look down more. I can still get up okay. Looking down, that was the biggie because he constantly looked like, oh, what's going on up there? And it still has all the rest of the movement. So if you're having trouble with that, rotate the neck at the base and see what happens. So at the end of the day, five redos and one brand new character for the shelf and one reissue when you count the Snowspeeder Luke. The clone trooper, yes, improvements were made. It's a very nice neutral trooper. Well, except for the gray markings on it, but it still has its problems. I don't know if I like those bands going around the elbows and the knees. Akbar, like I keep saying, we got the sequel version of him a few years ago. It's good to have the Return of the Jedi version. Beskar Mandalorian, I love that show. They made the proper changes for this figure to update it to for the end of season one. For the moment, this is my Black Series Mandalorian for the shelf. Darth Vader, they made those subtle little tweaks that happened between A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back, but they also improved the engineering with the butterfly shoulders, the neck movement. It's worth it to get this. And then the Stormtrooper may be my new favorite Stormtrooper. As I'm messing around with it, I notice that the helmet may be a little warped where it's glued to the head underneath. So I'm definitely gonna see what's under there, see what happens when I pop that off. This is getting army built. And for that one new character, Tebow, bringing the Ewoks to the line, yeah, I am ready. Give me a whole bunch of these guys. So on the surface, it seems like, oh, I already have all these. But once you start digging, and even with the weapons, Hasbro's went back, they've improve the material they use on the weapons to make them a little stiffer while still having some flex so you're not going to break them but the little sculpted details the the butterfly shoulders added in the articulation improvements the <laughs> i was going to say character selection with the ewok lots of original trilogy offerings here with just a dash of prequel and then some new hotness with the mandalorian so i I can't help but calling this wave a complete winner. And if you've got the 40th anniversary vintage carded Snowspeeder Luke to keep carded, or you skipped on it and was getting this, then that's a solid wave of seven figures. And the cool thing about it, when I have seen this up for order, Dorkside Toys has a solid case of the clones and the stormtroopers, but when I found them at stores, there's two stormtroopers per case. So if you're looking to army build, that shouldn't be a problem. So if you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. And I'm so glad I got these in hand because at first I thought, oh, I'm gonna pass on, you know, I don't need any more clones even though that's a new look. And why do I need a new Vader? And I needed Agbar. I can't lie about that. Mandalorian, oh, some armor updates, but this. Ichi Wawa.